Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, we're going to be discussing again today the um, solutions that we can do, you know, right now to stem the knife crime. Because seriously, enough is enough. We've been horrified, literally, at the murders in the last couple of weeks. Um, yes, I should have Christella today joining me and Laws Versace, hopefully. And if anyone would like to come on, please request um, to speak. Massive big up to Enigma, just joined us. How are you doing? Now, Let the Youth Live is all about solutions. We're all about working with other organisations, trying to help people that are doing exceptional work in the community. And we want the community to help them to do more of what they're already doing. And whether that means that you are sharing, um, you know, their posts, helping them, um, giving your time, donating, but literally, we've all been discussing um, for quite a few weeks now. Um, we've been having these live podcasts. We've spoken to the community. The community are speaking to us. Um, and we have literally come up with a lot of solutions that we could actually work together doing right now. Right, we have um, Christella. Right, I'm just going to add you up, my darling. Let's add you up. Hang on. Hopefully it will let me do it. <laughs> oh, that's it. You've done it. Brilliant. Yay. Did it work? Except I can't. Oh, I can see you. Yay. <laughs> It's yes! Hi! Uh, good to see you. And you, girl. Oh, man. How are you? I, I'm good, you know, but like yourself, the situation was going down on our streets is heartbreaking, man. Oh, I know. I mean, I still can't even take in what's happened over the last couple of weeks. More young people dying. Yeah. Bleeding on our streets. People filming. I know. Now, big up to everyone not. who's joined us. Please, please share up the live. We want to hear from as many of you as we can today. All right. So please request. We want to hear what your solutions are for right now. What we can do to stem the knife crime, the death of the young people. And we need, we need to hear from all of you, okay? So please share the live and please request. So yeah, Christella, this week, what I have noticed in the last week, I've heard some large platforms mm -hmm. speaking out about people recording young people dying. Yeah, I mean, honestly, it should be it should be a criminal offence. Mm -hmm. I totally agree with that. We've we've discussed this before on here, haven't we? Yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Now, I I couldn't actually believe it that the the big platforms and it happened sort of one after the other. Um, I, the first ones to do it was Scar City Studios. So big up to them for actually pointing out to people that this is not normal. You shouldn't be recording people dying. It's disgusting. No. Mm -hmm. I agree. Yeah. So big up to them for pointing it out. And I noticed once their, their show went out, all the others that followed all said exactly the same thing to start their shows. How disgusting it was. People filming people dying. Instead yeah. So it don't I, make I, sense, does it? Mm -hmm. It don't make sense. I don't no. understand it. No, it definitely doesn't. Now, Matthew, what are you doing? To Peace and Love Movement as well. Enough love to you. 
I just want to say as well, we are so proud of you, all right, over there. Um, you absolutely smashed it at the demo. We know how hard it is to get up and speak out. You did it, and you've done a great job. Really, really proud of you, all right? I just wanted to say that because literally, yeah, we know, you know, what comes with that and the fact of getting out up there and actually speaking out. So yeah. bless you and big up to you, all right? Enough love to you and all the mums. Uh, shout out to everyone else locked in. Um, yeah, if anybody would like to come up today on the live, just request. Um, we may have to keep it maybe, I don't know, 10 minutes each because we're literally just going to do an hour today. Yeah. Uh, Peace and love is saying the speech was 20 minutes. We're trying to get a copy. 20 minutes. Oh, cool. Cool. Very impressive. Do you know what's really nice about this journey, sweet? Is actually how many people do actually give a shit about the kids. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? When it really comes down to it, like, as we keep saying, this is a pandemic, it's a war, our kids are being slaughtered in the street. Like, I just don't understand it. Like, how, I mean, how it's got to this point. Yeah. How? Exactly. How? Because even years ago, enough was enough. That was way too many young people already. And it's just escalating and just, yeah, it's not stopping. And no. literally, um, I, one of the posts I put up, I think it was today, Garner Man, who's very supportive of what we're doing. Um, he always... Um, Sweet. Put, That's yeah. my young person. That's my young person. What? Okay, I'll have darling. to come back. Okay. I'll be back. All right, gorgeous. <laughs> Yes, um, I've lost my train of thought now. What was I saying, Matty? <laughs> oh, right. So what was I saying? I've completely lost it now. Because <laughs> someone reminds me what I was on, please. But yes, oh yeah, Mr. Um, Garner Man, he, um, he made a comment today and he said about um, the fact that we all need to come together and not wait not wait until, you know, there's a death on our doorstep or it's one of our own family members or our friends that literally we need to get together about the post. Ah, oh, brilliant. Thank you, my darling. <laughs> That's the thing with anxiety. It just it goes out the window. <laughs> now, one of the um, solutions that we did briefly talk on on one of our podcasts um, there was a mention, we did mention about a gang truce or a peace treaty. Now, um, Pastor Lorraine Jones spoke out about this quite recently. And, you know, I've not ever spoken to her about it, but it was something that she thought because of the emergency we're in, that we, you know, maybe we do need to speak to the gangs to try and get them to, you know, because there's too, there's too much blood on our streets. There's, it's so out of hand. Um, I don't know how we would do anything like this. Oh, right, let's see if we can get Christella back. Hey. Hello. Hey. Can you see me? No. Oh, I can yeah. now, yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Don't stop. Uh, yeah, so um, I was just talking about gang truce and just the fact that um, Lorraine, Pastor Lorraine Jones had spoken out about it as a solution. Um, mm. Ah, and Peace and Love Movement are saying, Farrah London has said she is organising this, a peace treaty. Oh, my God. Oh. I, I'm praying for that. I hadn't heard Brilliant. that either. So we need, like, it's something that I've always kind of had on a list, you know, as something that could be a solution. Um, mm. th that sounds very, yeah, I'm really happy that there's someone else talking about it, talking about organising it. 
Now, what Lorraine, when she did the video and she put up about the peace treaty and she was talking to somebody in the community, I don't know if he, it was a community leader, but somebody who was well involved in the community. And, he, uh, and they said, I don't know if it was male or female, sorry. They said that um, this is not that bad. Wait till we have three deaths a day per no. borough. And I mean, she was horrified. I was horrified when I heard that because I thought, I'm not waiting till it gets to that. Even now is too much. Yeah, even absolutely. That somebody said that even. It's shocking. Yeah, like how can you put a statistic on deaths? Like how can you, like how can you say that's almost invalidating every single young person that's lost their life, basically? Yep. Mm-hmm. That's how, that's how, you know what I mean? How can you say that? Yep. Now, the deaths that we've had recently, the two young people, mm. the one in Woolwich and the one in Lambeth, I mean, the one in Woolwich, um, he died in the high street, main daylight, yeah. daytime, a high street, busy high street. Um, they didn't see, there was no bleed kits, um, he didn't make it to a hospital, same as the other poor young boy, didn't make it to a hospital. Even the, the Scar City Studios were talking about the fact that the injuries and the attacks that are taking place are so severe, our children, mm. are, are, they're not making it. So no. They're dying on the street. I know. Now, you know... We, we're trying to promote the um, bleed reduction kits, the bleed reduction cabinets. We yep. would love for people to share that. Um, we have a GoFundMe. We're not asking you, you know, to donate to our GoFundMe if you don't want to. We want to um, provide these cabinets in our local areas to start with. But we want everybody getting together and raising the money yourselves. So you know your local high street, if something happens, you could try and attempt to save a young person. Or Literally. It, yeah. And I'm just Literally. hoping that people, you know, that it dawns on them that this is, that is one thing that is a life saving. That we could start hearing, you know, children have been saved. For now, you know, while we work out or discuss and find out, you know, what needs to change with laws and whatever else and things that take a long time. Well, it's like everyone's saying, summer's around the corner now. That is scary. What's in place, what's in place to reduce the risk there? Mm -hmm. it, that, is, it, that is a frightening thought. Literally. Uh, we've got two school patrols that have been set up, but that's literally two in the whole of London, say, for example. Mm. So we it's not enough. How many more? It's not enough, sweet. Mm -mm. It's definitely not. And I don't know how we get everybody to work with one another. Because that has been... It's been a struggle for many, many years. Yeah, especially within the professional arena. Um... You know, there's, and, and I think this is what people forget is that a lot of these kids are in care, yeah? Mm. Aside from the ones that aren't. So they, they don't really have that level of support or family unit. Like they're literally on their own. Mm. They can't, you know, there's so, so many things that you can't share, that you can't say. So, you know, it's just like, how, how do you try and support someone and get them out of a system that's then designed to keep them trapped? Mm -hmm. How? And this is what I mean. It's going to take, you know, us coming together because we need to all have that discussion. You know, the input, the what are we doing next? What, yeah, where are we going with this? Because I just feel if we just leave, you know, and don't, where, where are things going to be? Well, I think community centres need to need to offer some free services and get people, parents to volunteer. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Or, you know, there's buildings that can be used. All right, yeah. they've cut facilities by by miles, but this is your children we're talking about. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Now, I wanted to share some good news with everyone. Mm-hmm. Uh, my friend Marlon, who runs Walking with Giants 24-7, um, we've done quite a few interviews. I've done quite a few interviews with him. He's a person who is, yeah, doing exceptional things in our communities. He's literally, where he's based over in South London, he had, Mm -hmm. like, the only safe hub. Um, He had a building which Croydon Council took off him. There was a lot. Like, literally, we we reached out to everybody, yeah, to try and find another base for him. We, like... It was ridiculous. We tried to organise like meetings even like this on the Instagram. Um, and people who we thought were going to back or support or do something literally did nothing. But good news, he now has the building back. Yes. I'm so happy. But literally, they lost the building for a year and a half. And in that year and a half, possibly two years there's been some devastating stuff that's gone on with the young people. Some are not here. Mm. Some are in situations they still, they can't like get out of because of of. what's Mm. gone on. Yeah. Serious. Um, Marlon was out, even without the building, he was outside man with them. He was, yeah, even being really ill, like he was yeah, very, very, very ill. Um, went into hospital and stuff and he's still like and what the problem was over there where he is there's no one else around there doing anything similar Mm. like literally um christella there's there's no there's no one um and then when what we found trying to get some support for him and get you know i was even trying to raise the money to pay the rent that's where it got to Mm. Like uh, I was oh. willing to do kind of anything because I know how important that base was for the young people. They literally yeah. he he was doing and he'll be doing all this again, but they were doing um it were being taught how to repair motorbikes, teaching them valuable skills, which they would do up the the motorbikes, then sell them, sell it, say, and then put the funds back into the youth centre. Um, He was doing martial arts there. He was doing um, computer skills, filming, music, like, and this was all initially off his own back and his own money and his own plate, you know. Mm. Um, But I'm so, so happy that he's back there. But literally, if there's anybody out within the vicinity of where he is, even some support would be great. Because I, I don't want this to happen to him again and the young people. Because it was them that paid the price for losing that building. Literally. It's actually very, very upsetting, actually. The whole spot. Really good news that they are back open. But I That's like amazing. think people will now support what they're doing. Um, genuinely saving lives. But that's just like, that's one area area in South London. I think he's, I think it's kind of Norwood, Thornton Heath kind of way. So, yes. So, anybody on here? Um, oh, right. Sorry, peace and love movement. Yes. So, that's roughly where he is. But I know, I was shocked, yeah, that the building that they had, literally in a few kind of, like, there was nothing in a big vicinity. And that was the hub to keep, you know what I mean? To keep them safe. And he's brilliant. He is absolutely brilliant with them, Marlon. You know, like Amazing. Christella. Christella. Mate, my young, my young people come first. I've got a number 24 hours if they need me. They call me, they come first. I don't care if I'm doing a live. I don't care what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Exactly. That's how it is. Sorry if that's disappointing to other people, but I don't do my job to impress people. I do it to change kids' lives, innit? So, and I'm on things. Yep. And big up to you. I'll always say that for the wonderful work that you do. You know, Thanks, and girl. you're passionate. 
you know you're passionate you love what you do you know like and it's genuine and you can see that and feel it as well so big it has to be listen these young people are stupid they know what's fake and what's real you know mm -hmm. don't get it twisted don't underestimate them yeah. and i think that's been part of the problem people think you know yes they are vulnerable because they're not you know, when someone has a certain level of experience, manipulation is a big thing. You have to manipulate people to get them to a position to do what you want to do. There's a whole process, a whole grooming process. And these yeah. are things that adults need to look into, especially parents. You know, what is grooming? Grooming is just not sexual. Yeah. You know, it's, exploitation covers a big range of topics to do with young people. And I just don't think there's enough information out there where people are actually taking on board that information. Yeah. You know, this type of stuff needs to be taught in schools. Mm, definitely. Don't definitely. just bring in a police officer and say, oh, that's crack and that's heroin. No. Yeah. What about the whole process of being exploited and being groomed? Yeah. That. How many kids' lives are taken? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The cost of what, what a prison sentence is going to look for, you know. Now, so really, we've lost two or four. Because for everyone that takes a life, you lose your life on the road, mate. Yeah. What are you achieving? So, so, so all of our prisons are being filled up with young people that have also lost their life. It's, it's sad what's going on. It really, really is. But I do believe, you know, us working together, having the right people working together with the right message, I believe that we definitely can make a difference. Uh, massive big up to Diverted Root as well. I just want to thank you as well for the lovely T-shirt. Sorry, we're going to have to... Ooh. Oh, cool. Oh, I feel highly blessed. Thank you very, very, very much. Uh, massive shout out to Diverted Roots. I'm doing exceptional work as well in our communities. Lovely merch range as well. So thank you and blessings to you. Okay. Now, if anyone would like to come up on the live, we would love to hear from you. Um, you know, talk about anything you've heard us speaking about today or any solutions that you think might work right now to save lives. We definitely would love to hear from you. Peace and love movement. They are saying they're starting to teach coercive behaviour. Year six primary school. Mm. That's good. That's very good. And I was going to say, I actually, I know a lot of people that do go around and do wonderful workshops. But they're in a variety of different places. You know, like, do you know what I think would be very good if they had some of these online? You know, like actually... Because obviously they have to physically go into schools and they have to physically, but I think it might be good if they had some online, you know, like the thing what they come in and do in the school, but if they had it videoed so that more people could see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so that might be an it's, idea. It's all about <laughs> recognising signs, isn't it? It's all about recognising signs, looking at behaviour, you know, have, really understanding what you know what that young person could be going through you know so what you've got to do is monitor you know how many pairs of clothes are they taking how long are they going missing for who what yeah. type of conversations you know are they having what what type of people are they around all these little things and little clues that could give you an idea as to if a young person is being exploited yeah you know each young person oh it's not going to happen to me it's not going to happen to me until your mate don't come back from the bando from ot brother it could be yeah I think we could do the that, that, something like that, getting something like you to do something like, you know, like to actually just put that in a short video. Because mm. the thing is, you're, you know, like you actually know due to what you do, you know, you do, you know these things. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, we've got, we remember I spoke to you about a little something. I think we need to touch back on that because I think now's the time. Mm-hmm. So what, I do what, have something. Me, you know what my brain's like. <laughs> I'll message you, but <laughs> I do have an idea as to as to something that uh, I'm, I want. Yeah, to... yeah, no, I know. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, out. see. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I think now's the time to kind of to start working on that. Really, if I'm honest, so we'll have a chat about that after the show, mate. Yes, definitely. 
Now, if, if there's anyone who wants to come up on the live, we'd love to hear from you. What about you, Mish Mill? One of my artists. Who have we got? The real hey. Um, Big P as well. Massive shout out to you. Um, yeah, come on. You just need to request. We want to hear from you. We want some other ideas, opinions. I'm trying to think what else I had. Um, we've spoken about the gang truce which that's fabulous if they are looking into the peace treaty. Um, mm. There's one thing, I mean, Glasgow did this. They did this, I don't know how many years ago, and it sorted out their serious violence. It literally sorted it out. Same as the, um, the social help with the, the health, oh, I can't think now it's gone, but the, the social, whatever it is, <laughs> that takes 10 years, the social plan. Yeah, when they do oh, yeah. When they speak, yeah, coordinates between one another. Um, they did that as well. But that literally takes 10 years. We need to think some, of something now. One of the things I noticed when we've been doing the podcast, we had, we had a few people come on and talk about um, reactive solutions, saying that what we were talking about were reactive solutions. But I've thought about it and I thought, well, we do have to react because if we don't react right here and right now, then, yeah, we're not helping and we're not prevent, trying to prevent. And I believe we do need to be reactive in these solutions for now, like the school patrols, the patrols. Otherwise, we're just waiting for statistics, right? For, for the actual fatality of three in each borough. Yeah. Oh, thank you, peace and love movement. It was public health issue. Yes, it public health <laughs> um, was how Scotland dealt with it, and they reduced it by sixty-seven percent. Yes, and they also did the gang truce, and that were it was effective. And they had they had a more serious. I don't know about now, but I know back then they had way more serious um, violence and drug problem than us, and that's how mm. they they. They dealt with it. So I never understand why our government never did that. What I don't understand is we have every single form of technology possible to reach millions of people at one point, yet kids are dying and... Can someone explain to me the logic of this bullshit? Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. Now, I'm just going to put it out there because so many people keep saying the same thing to me. It's all about money. Yeah, but we know that. It is. Mm -hmm. It is yeah. about money. Mm -hmm. It's definitely because about money. Mm -hmm. How much does it really cost for everyone to step outside their house and bloody, you know, know which kids are living where and actually, you know, work as a community? Does that really cost money? Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, but adults got too used to making excuses living in this day and time. Mm-hmm. Exactly. We're meant to protect our children. That, Everyone's got an excuse. Mm -hmm. Right. Big P TV saying school patrols and we need some. Yeah, definitely. And we need some proper people that's been there and done it to talk to the kids. Now, we've got loads of them on board. Like, literally, I know we've got that. But we need them to kind of join together, which is kind of, it's been really difficult. Like, it's been so, and I never expected it to be so difficult. Um, but a lot, there's a lot of organisations that, you know, they're doing great work, but they don't seem to see the great work that others are doing, or when they're in difficulties, helping them out, or helping to promote what they're doing. Um, I mean, the, the, the knife crime demo, that you organised, Peace peace, um, and Love Movement, um, that was organised, that you went to... Um, I, don't, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I know I shared it, but I didn't, like... I know when we've tried to do the Serious Youth... Say No to Serious Youth Violence um, campaign, literally, there was a lot of community leaders that I approached. There was a lot of different organisations and people who are high profile on Instagram who are 
supposedly about what we're all about, but they didn't share anything. They didn't come. They didn't, yeah. So it's very, and I think it's about finding the right people who are supporting each other, who are working together because it's going to take us working together. Yeah. There's no way we, it can be separate organisations doing this, this, this. And if, like I've discovered recently, and I, that kind of where I am, South London, there's not much in place. There's literally not a lot in place, particularly where I am, Peckham, Dulwich, Nunhead. Like there's nothing that I know of. There's literally... Do you know what would be really nice? Like, do you know like the community street parties? Mm -hmm. where everyone they set table in the middle of the streets and mm -hmm. everyone brings side from the house and everyone eats outside and, and you know what i mean like what's happened people no one like don't get me wrong i know the world's twisted but like on a level like if you if we like you say work together then it's going to prevent a lot of this bullshit mm -hmm. yeah we need more it, opportunities there's so much, right? People, there's people out there doing so much, right? That's literally why I started this because I saw how much was being done, but that people were doing stuff all over the place and other people didn't know about what they were doing. And it was so like shocking how much people were doing that I thought, no, our people need to know about this and we need to get the community on board to try and help them to do more of what they're doing. So that literally, yeah, and I believe if everybody was communicating like that and supporting one another, even if it's not your event or your thing you've organized or, you know, there's no one on here. I just want to say as well, there's no one on this line. <laughs> Everyone on here is great. Um, and being very, very, very supportive. Um, massive shout out. Oh, Broski's just arrived. Romantic serial killer. How you doing? Mm, hi. Um, I put up one of his posts the other day that was very, and it was all about people profiting from pain. That's lit, but that's what the world does, though. That's what capitalism is, isn't it? Look around you. Mm -hmm. Companies profit off of women's insecurities by selling us products that damage our skin rather than heal it. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> it, that, that's, what, that's what making money is. People profit off pain. And that's the, that's the truth. Yeah. And it is. And this is what's going on. But the thing is, this is our children and it's time we claim them back from this. You know, like, we, ca I, we yeah, can't. Yeah, but sweet, do you know what? People have to want to do it. Yeah. They either care or they don't care. care. Yeah. yeah. And this is it because that, that's what I discovered when we were doing the nationwide campaign. I was mm. shocked at the things that were said to me. Like, literally, so shocked. People trying to put me off. People telling me, why are you bothering? What? Oh, you're going to save one life? Like, what? Hang on. Like, it was shocking. Like, actually shocking. But then there's genuine people who actually care, who actually do want to do something. There's a lot of people who don't know what to do. And that was another reason why we've kind of, why we've formed and, you know, so we're kind of a hub so that people can, if they want to do something in their area, find out mm. who's doing what and get involved. Yeah. Now, Big P that. is saying, um, oh yeah, you need people to speak to the kids, not teachers or parents. Nobody listens. We know that to their teachers or parents. Uh, they will listen to role models. Now, we were talking about who are... Yeah, but right who are they who are our children's role model who are they looking up to who are they watching who are they we di we discussed this yeah there are rappers there are you know big platform youtubers that our kids are fashion watching. fashion designers you know you've got kids out here that don't have nothing and they and yet yeah, they're wearing gucci are you mad what? Excuse me? Mm -hmm. And then this becomes a fashion trend. And then it's like, hold on. You lot are wearing Gucci. You're not owning it. So I'm not understanding. Don't get me yeah. wrong. We all like a designer here and there. Do you know what I mean? But 
if you've got it, cool. If you haven't got it, then what are you doing? So you think because you've got 500 pounds that what, you're going to just go and spend that all on some designer? Bro. Mm. Yeah. How, think of how much money all these organisations, all these companies make from yeah. you going out there shopping, putting your life at risk to try and put yeah. a little 20 or something in your pocket. Mm-hmm. Or even if you've got big bucks, do you know what I mean? You're spending it in all in companies that have got how much money over you? Do you know what I mean? So really, what are you doing? You're just doing it for the look of it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And they're not, you know, they don't care about our communities at all. No. Why would they? God. But, you know, they cater for the rich. And I think the expectation from young people is that being rich and having as many chicks or as many men or as whatever as you can is the way to go and selling drugs is cool but this is what they're people's seeing cool. though everywhere this, isn't is it? Power. this is the narrative that's being pushed everywhere the violence mm. the money the get like and that's what we were saying about some kind of quality control um mm. for people who are role models who our children are looking up to and that's true that that's acceptable I've mm. just seen as well, Peace and Love Movement, um, they're saying that they've brought in five years for carrying and people stopped carrying. So, oh, that's, 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 is that a new law then, through Five years? Um, they're saying they'll find money when they want to, but that's not good enough. Yep, that's exactly right. Um, Big P saying role models, etc. People the kids look up to, yep. It's hard to stop what the government has created before the internet. This whole shit was all in unheard of since black... Oh, yeah. So it's right. That's exactly what we were talking about the other week, P. Exactly the same thing. And I'm sure plenty of people came on and said the start of the um, social media, the Blackberry thing. Yep. And the world has gone mad. It's literally... I mean, even judges have been saying lately, you know, it's, it's out of hand. Um, the law's not up to date to deal with this social media and the huge, like, it, yeah. It's not. So we want, we need ideas, like, because literally we know social media, we know these platforms and social media, we have to do something because our children are not being protected. They're not being protected no. from violence at all. There's nothing in place. We've had that looked into absolutely um yeah i just but it's true even what peace and uh love has just said like someone was killed for a gucci bag last year weren't they oh my god yeah and this is it this is it you know i what about there was one i read and it was 20 pounds they killed the young boy for 20 pounds because it, it, it i think it was a fake note or something but he didn't know and he got murdered for it you see? But they wanted to prove, you know, like, don't mess with us, you know, so he got murdered. And I'm sure he was, re like, really, really young, like, possibly 12 or 13. I mean, I can't even imagine what that must feel like, losing it. Like, you know it's devastating, but just that you're never going to see your child again. And the horrific... Oh, and the fact like we're saying people filming as well. Oh, this, this is what, that's my issue right now. They, this is my issue. How dare you? Mm -hmm. How dare you feel someone losing their life? Like, literally, how dare you? Uh, yeah. right, you're was... just as bad as the person that done it. Honestly, I can't yeah. even take that argument today because that winds me up. Mm -hmm. Now, does anybody want to join us up on the live? Um... Just request, oh, I can see a romantic serial killer. If anybody else would like to come up, because I think we can get two people on. Oh, Sean Powers as well, if you're still there, we would love to get you on as well. Sean tragically lost his son. Um, oh. In February. Yeah. Devastated, like, yeah. Um, so if you, I would love to get you on, Sean. Um, just have to speak to you. Shout out to everybody locked in. Uh, romantic serial killer is saying um, for £20 you can get a crackhead to do a hit. And this is another thing, the drugs problem. Like, well, this is the, the main, you know, one of the main connections to knife crime and our young people dying and being exploited. Mm 
Mm-hmm. It's the main one of the main reasons, if not the biggest reason. Yeah. We can't avoid it. Now we need. We definitely need more artists, rappers speaking out about all of this. Um, I want to big up Scheme Sterling, um, who was performing at the chip shop last week, a week before, um, where I was DJing. And literally, his lyrics, man. We need to hear more lyrics like what he was spitting. He's talking like properly about what's going on in the community and that people need to st- stand up and say something as others. Mm. So big up to him. Like it was refreshing to hear an artist actually speaking out, um, talking about current issues. Um, right, big PTV. He's saying, as an older, we have let the young ones down. Yep. By not guiding them in the right way. Our eldest showed us manners, respect, and loyalty. Yep. And it's unheard of. Yeah, now. Yeah. I, exactly. We all have, you know, a part to play. We're all accountable. More time the elders are the perpetrators now, though, sweet. This is the other thing. We're getting, yeah, like that now as well. And I was mm-hmm. thinking that the problem with, with the, like, it's not just knife crime. It's violence, serious no. violence in general. It's gun crime. Mm-hmm. Um, it's all, like, all of that. And it's not just, it's not just young people doing it. It seems to be like a, like a, a lifestyle switch. Yeah. Um, it, like, I can't get it. I could never, you know, like the, yeah. So I, I just, I, I don't know. Things are so different to what I've ever known before. But it's definitely about yeah. us working together. It is. I think. I think the two things is what the internet's allowing to be put out and people filming. Like, do you know what? How would you feel? If it was somebody you knew and loved that was dying and someone's filming them, I would like to know, oh, please, God. all you people God. that have picked up a camera and are filming a child dying, let me know how you would feel if that was a young person in your family or in your circle. Because I guarantee you, you, you wouldn't be you wouldn't be happy. No. And what, one of You're the not bad boys. for that, though. You're not bad for that. It doesn't make you look big, you know, all for your views. Mm-hmm. And one of the Come on. boys... His, his parents, they hadn't even contacted his parents to inform them, but it's gone viral. Disgusting. How to, like, is that really what we are as a UK nation? Are you telling me that's what we're good for? Yeah. Is that what you lot are trying to tell me? Yeah. Nah, man. Twisted. Twisted. I don't fuck with that shit. That's disgusting. No, I'm with you on that, man. It's, it's like it don't even... Like, yeah, it doesn't comprehend even to me how things are like that. Big P's saying it's all down to the internet. If we want to be real, it's all got worse when internet came out. Yep. And like I said, loads of people have come on and said that, haven't they, as well? Mm -hmm. Before the net, um, it was all unheard of. People used to fight. Yeah. Like actual fighting. Yeah. Um, But now all they see on the net... um, is all madness. Uh, romantic serial killer saying, I would fuck them up. <laughs> is that, do you want to put, um, I'm going to put you on the live in a minute. That's when I'm filming their drop at my hands. I can't, hang on. Right, big up to Irvis and Dino. Big P, do you fancy coming on? Because, um, yeah, we want to hear from you as well. The thing is, net banging is mocked and laughed at in the USA. Oh, no, it's not right at all, but it's the world we're living in. If we're going to blame anyone, it's the fucking internet. I was here before the net. The world was different. The internet feeds violence and money. Right, we're in total agreement of that, right? Where we're at with it, P, right, we talked and talked about this, right? Everybody said exactly the same as you. And then we were like, right, so how do we make the internet accountable? Right. By no. allowing these videos to be put onto social media platforms that gain views. It's disgusting. Yeah. All for what? A view, bro. Is this the Hunger Games or something? Am I not, am I not understanding? 
Yeah. People are turning in, into the paparazzi because they got a smartphone watching a child die. Yeah. So this is what we're good for is the UK. Is that what you call coming together? Disgusting. Disgusting. Yeah. And mm -hmm. you call yourself bad. Are you mad? Yeah. I ain't got no tolerance for it. it I, honestly, I'm so fuming mm -hmm. about that situation. I'm so fuming. How dare you? How mm -hmm. dare you? Yeah. How and dare you? They should have been able to trace who actually sent that out, you know, the original video. Because like uh, Romantic Serial Killer said the other week, like there's metadata on every video. So the originator can always be found. Now, if we could get something like that organised, people start getting nicked for doing it. But right, it we... should be a criminal offence, sweet. I'm sorry, but it should be. Unless you're handing that over to the police for evidence, right? What yeah. are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. I can't. I can't. Honestly, it gets me fuming. I'm so mad right now. Got Big P saying, imagine the world tomorrow if the internet got cancelled. The minds of the people are already gone crazy. How would people be if that happened? Just think, everyone would be like crackheads wanting a fix. Mm, literally. I hadn't even thought of that, you know, like that. Because when you deep it, this generation of kids grew up with the internet. For the ones of us that didn't, yeah. we know what life was like yeah. before. Yes, there were still paedophiles. Yes, there were still people that was exploiting young people. The only difference is a lot more people were getting away with it then. A lot. Yeah. Now it's all come to light and we're really seeing what it yeah. is. It's highlighted even more. And this generation has grew up with that. That's yeah. what's happened. This is where, you know, and I've been screaming it. Kids from the age of seven have, uh, have been watching porn. So how is a young boy supposed to understand what love and emotions are? How? Yeah. Exactly. And then they're learning from TV how to, how, how to not have no emotions, how not to have no feelings. And young girls are being brainwashed to, to be that, you know, to the point of such insecurity that, you know, you don't look like this or you don't look like that. So we're brainwashed from kids. So we go through all of this insecurity to lose ourselves, to be forced to lose ourselves for what's really real, yeah? Then when you hit your teens, that's when they start programming the aggression side and the hormonal side of young people. So that's when the violence comes out. And that's when, you know, it, it, it becomes a whole different transition into brainwashing. Yeah. There's a lot of that going down, man. Right, I'm going to read one more question, um, one more point from Big P. Then I was going to take a uh, romantic serial killer on the live because he's saying he's got a mad point to make, all right? So we better let him make it. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Um, Big P saying there's a bigger picture. The government have turned us all into junkies, but it's not crack, it's the internet. And we're all dumb asking what's the problem. It's the internet. Right, so... We need to think how we're going to do something about this. The only suggestions I think we had last time was, I think Peace and Love Movement, actually, who suggested about um, going for big influencers who could get the message out there. Um, I wanted to look into emergency laws, how we could get something put in place. Um, and the only one I know about is Cobra, but I still am yet to speak to a specialist about how we do that. Um, I mean, me and Christella, we're quite up for going to MPs' houses. We were thinking about that recently, direct. But I'm worried I'm going to get arrested, mate, because I can't <laughs> help myself. I will. Yeah, oh, so I think I'm getting arrested. If I thought it was because... going to be, you know, like, um, chaining me up somewhere. <laughs> but yes, right, so we need everybody's, like, thinking caps on, because literally... This is we we have to do something. That's like this is something that's cropped up every podcast. You know, is something we're all in agreement upon is the social media because it's definitely pushing the narrative, perpetuating the vi perpetuating the violence. So yes, um, big up as well for everyone. Um, everyone's points. EOGB says. The millennials are messed up. This generation of kids do not have any morals. The boys do not know how to respect girls. And the girls really need to stop with this OnlyFans. Um, okay. 
back in the day, says Big P, it was money that made people better than others. Now it's followers. Think about if we care more about followers. Yeah, we care more about followers than money these days. Well, I think that goes back to the whole, like when you look at it, <laughs> oh, this is a whole different story. But when you look at it, money now is digital. So when yeah. you grow up as a young person and you're playing video games and you get money, it's digital. Yeah. In the game. So now it's digital in real life. So what's yeah. the difference? Yeah. And then the videos we're seeing, because I, I clicked on one community leaders page and witnessed the murder. Um, and the, the kids in the background, if someone's getting run over, they're like, hey, it's like GTA. And I'm thinking, like, what am I fucking, what? you know, like, what has it come to? Well, it's not even that. Again, you know, it starts with, if you've got the, if you've got no mind about going to take someone's life, how many animals have you tortured prior to that? Mm. Yeah. Because that's Cause always... That's, a you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The world's just full of violence. And when you deep it, all, all of these corporations that sell money, they're making money off a of dead carcass anyway, mate. I'm sorry, by street. Yeah. However you want to see it. So, do you know what I mean? It's death everywhere. And yes, that's part of life. I hear that. But we're teaching young people to kill each other for shit that's not even fucking real. Yeah. But who was it? I posted up another video that some, I think it was a uh, miniature rapper. And he was saying that. It was like, you know, in, in say a few years, the things that you would have murdered someone for, net like, they're going to literally mean nothing. It's going to be trivial stuff that, you you know, like... And it is, it's trivial shit that people are getting killed over. Literally. Frightening, man. Right, should we put um, Romantic Serial Killer on the live? And if anybody would like to come up next, we'd like to get as many of you up on the live, all right? So please, just request, all right? Okay. Oh, hang on. Right, let me just add you up. Oh, hang on. Where's, where have I got? <laughs> hang on. Hang on. Where have I got? <laughs> Did I change the thing? Hey! Salute. Hey. hey! Good to see you. How are you? Good to see you too as well. Yeah. What's going on? My camera's gone like that. Hang on. I look like I'm... Oh, right. it adjusts, didn't it? The yeah. point... The point I wanted to make was about uh, people filming murders and stuff. Now, I don't know about everybody who does that, but maybe some of them already know this, which is why they're doing it. Yeah. You know, there's something called due process of law. And if the due process of law is actually um, messed up in any way, yeah. then the case gets thrown out by the judge. And one of the ways to screw up due process of law is by filming a criminal incident yep. and then posting it all over the internet. Because what happens is the judge will say, this is going to affect the way that the jury oh, decides on ahead. the case. So they throw it out. So you get loads of murder cases getting thrown out of the court and the public don't know about it. And they don't, they don't get told by the media or the government or the police or the judiciary. Yeah. And that's because obviously they don't want to put people onto this information because people will increase the fact that they do that, yeah, to deliberately destroy the due process of law. Yeah. But what I want to say is there's already actually legislation in place that can deal with that. Mm -hmm. If you're seen to be deliberately interfering with the due process of law, deliberately, with intent, mm -hmm. that's called, um, what do you call it again? They they arrest people all the time for this. Mis uh, uh, what is it? Perversion of justice. Oh, justice, yeah, yeah. yeah. Trying to pervert the course of justice, that's right. Perverting the course of justice. They can arrest you for that. So when you mentioned the metadata earlier, yeah, yeah that, that point that I made yeah, before is facts. <laughs> you can trace it back to the originator. Yeah. So if the police weren't... Uh, uh, sorry for swearing, but they piss no, me off no. because they're lazy right. pieces of shit. <laughs> if the police weren't such a bunch of fucking idiots, they would do their job properly. They would investigate 
the metadata on the original footage yeah. and they would fuck that person up for basically perverting the course of justice, yeah. which can carry a fucking huge sentence, mm. especially if you're perverting the course of justice with murder, yeah. rape, pedophilia, that kind of shit. Yeah. You can get absolutely fucking dragged through the dirt for that shit. Mm. Yeah. So there's already shit in place, but they just can't be fucking bothered to deal with it. That's what the issue is, yes. which is why I was saying this is a shit. Speak yeah. the truth, because it's facts. It's facts. Yeah. Yeah. Say, I yeah. want all that in writing, though, because that's really, that's really interesting point. We need to, people need to understand you, you that. You know your stuff, don't you, eh? <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I know how to get yeah. to the core of it and do the jugular vein cut, which is end the problem instantly by getting to the root of it. And the exactly. root in this is the police yeah. have got a job with a certain description, mm -hmm. but they're not, Doing. they're not meeting up to that <laughs> description. They're more interested in driving around poor areas yeah. and fucking stop and searching everybody they pass without reasonable grounds, yeah. just trying to find weed in someone's pocket. Yeah, what exactly. the fuck is wrong with yeah. these people? I know. Fucking they know weed work. is not a fucking problem. No. Alcohol is a fucking problem and mm -hmm. it's legal yeah. and you can buy it on every fucking street corner the truck, and you can get pissed out of your fucking head mm -hmm. and if any psychologist is present in these feeds, they can comment on the post. They know most burglars, rapists, murderers, they all get roaring fucking drunk before they do their shit. Mm -hmm. pa pedophiles do it as well. Yeah. They ply the kids with alcohol and they drink themselves as well. That's where that shitty old saying, Dutch courage, comes oh, from about alcohol. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Rapists and pedophiles and sex predators that ply people with alcohol. Mm -hmm. And ply themselves yeah. with it and to that, get I, themselves in that. Yeah, whenever I've read you know it, why? Because it gives them that courage to not really give a fuck but, about mm -hmm. what might happen as a result. Yeah. These people seem to think I was drunk is an excuse or something yeah, for lewd okay. and fucked behaviour. Mm -mm. It's not. No, definitely. So why is weed still illegal? when weed makes people fucking peaceful, and that's a known fact, why do they still promote all that bullshit from oh, old crap government propaganda? Podcast, we, were talking, like, we were talking about that. Have you seen Reefer Madness? Have yeah, you seen Reefer Madness? Yeah. That is such a fucking joke, man. Every stoner laughs at that shit. And these pricks in Parliament still believe that shit like it's, like it's gospel or something. Yeah. They're fucking idiots. <laughs> And yet all these pricks in Parliament that are keeping weed illegal are sniffing fucking coke nearly every day. Yeah. Do you remember the politician that you saw fucking falling asleep and falling off his chair? Yeah. I can't remember which one it was, but so I know really. somebody who knows somebody who sold him his fucking coke that, that week oh. that he went on a mad binge. Yeah. Right. You hear these things in the fucking loophole, do you know what I mean? When you live in the hood, mm -hmm. <laughs> there's plenty of MPs and House of Lords members on coke lines out there. There's even cops on there. You know, I used to know somebody who had a, about seven coppers from Paddington Green Police Station on his fucking coke line. Oh. And, and they, they never troubled him. They protected him mm -hmm. and they picked up their fucking coke from that. Breath. I don't know him personally, but I know of him. And I know it's a reality as well, because I've seen shit going on. See, we need to find out about some good quality MPs out there. <laughs> Cause... You know what? If you're snitching on the police, fuck them, then. Mm. <laughs> That's not snitching, then. No, because We don't they... give that honour to the police of the G-code. No. They give us oath. Remember that. They're here to serve us. us. Yeah. They're supposed to, but let me tell you a massive problem with that. Do you know about the plot of Parliament, the, the historical plot? It was meant to be royal council. They basically got infiltrated by the lower lords and the barons. They took it over, which is why you've seen the same family names over and over and over again in the House of Commons for hundreds of years, because it is an election. They're not elected. None of them are. They're all brought in by each other. And they've been doing it for hundreds of yeah. years. And what they did in 1704, they installed a house of vetting 
German monarch on the English throne. And they did that knowing that that person is an illegitimate monarch. They were not even in line for the throne in the house of Bet in itself. So they're completely illegitimate. They're put there under treason. And they are always telling you to your face in the newspapers, on the news. Every now and again, they remind you and them as well. They are a symbolic monarchy that don't have any power or authority in the UK. So what does that say about their oath if they're a symbolic monarchy? They don't have any power or authority in the UK. So how are they meant to grill the people who don't obey their oath? Yeah. Traditionally, treason was punishable by death. And anybody under oath, like MPs, police, military, if they breached their oath, then they were up for treason and they would be put to death in a lot of cases. Now, they abolished treason. They did that deliberately because they committed treason, historically, to pull off this big fuss. So you've got a symbolic monarchy with a symbolic oath. You can't have a, a, a real valid oath to a symbolic monarch, can you? Because mm. how are they going to uphold it for you? The oath is supposed to be a smoking gun for you to point at them when they breach it. But as long as it amounts to nothing because it's a symbolic oath, you're disarmed. You ain't got that smoking gun yeah. to point at them because they don't give a shit about it. Mm. You go out in the street and ask any copy you like, excuse me, sir, can you repeat your oath to me word for word? Yeah. None of them can do it. What does that tell you? How the fuck are they acting on something yeah, they, don't they don't even know? know? Right, they don't know. So they're not acting on it then, are they? No. They're going against it on nearly every occasion. Mm. Even certain legislations go against their oath. That's mad. There's a lot of legislation that doesn't make sense. There's, a There's too much of it. I mean, really, what we need is an entirely new system. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think that's the, that's the system. We need, we need oh. the real monarchy of Britain back in place so the oath takes effect over these people. And, yeah. and a real monarchy can tell these people, you want to lose your head? Keep playing with my subjects. Yeah. Keep playing around with my people and your head is in a basket. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's what a good monarch yeah, would yeah. do for Come the it. people. Literally, thank a you. A good monarch, surely they want to be loved, right? Surely they want the people to love them, right? Mm -hmm. Or otherwise they could be faced with a rebellion. Yeah. Right? So then whip the asses of the police and those in oath. But they can't because they're symbolic. How can a symbolic monarch say anything? They trouble the government, the government will replace them with another symbolic monarch that will do the job as they're told. It's true. It's true. So either way, they've got us, in it? But we've got them because there's more of us than there is them. And this is what humanity like. But this is the thing. There's not. See, in response to we are the 99%, which I can't help laughing at, I'm really sorry, but I always laugh at protesters when I hear them chanting that we are not the 99%. They are the 1%, and the divide and rule strategy that they use every day on all of us through every means they possibly can keeps us all less than 1% because we're all splintered up groups of people fighting and arguing with each other over every difference we have. It's and it's and, it's and it's check it. this out. Mm -hmm. Why are people fighting over differences? Because in all honesty, it only takes you to know someone a certain length of time and you will come across a difference you have with them. Yeah. Just let it go. People have fucking differences of opinion on different shit. So what? Yeah. Live your life. Don't let that fuck your life up because somebody else thinks something different. So what? They're not the king. They can't change shit. Ignore it. Yeah. And then it becomes a distraction. <clears throat> with people. It all becomes a yeah. distraction. I've been telling hoodmans for years, go and get to know some punks, because punks generally are quite disobedient to authority. You might find that they're similar to you, really. Yeah. And you just don't know it because you hate them for the way they look, which is ridiculous. Because maybe they don't like the way you dress as well, mm -hmm. or the way you behave or talk. But if you all make efforts to come together, you might find you actually vibe with each other. I've been saying it for years because my uncle is a punk. 
and he you know he's always had like interest in political views and stuff punks do a lot of um protests and you know activism and stuff and people don't realize that goths some of the goths are cool as well so what if the fucking guys put fucking black nail blanche on who gives a shit so what i don't care yeah. Each to their own, yeah. yeah. So fucking what if he wants to put black nail varnish on? I don't give a shit. Mm-hmm. It's it's not hurting me. Yeah. I don't care if he's a cool guy. Yeah. If he's a cool... Now, I keep telling these hoodmans, bro, you talk about getting better links, this, that, and the other. You don't understand. Some of these goths have got links here yeah, that you would dream about. Mm-hmm. So... What are you talking about? Yeah, exactly. You're hating on people for dumb reasons. Dumb reasons. Oh, uh, you support Arsenal. Yeah. Da, da, da. I'm going to joke you up. What's this? I know. Insanity. Right. Insanity. Oh, no. just... It's all the divide and rule shit. Yeah. Well, I'm just going to bring someone else up on the live. Um, we've got another request. Sorry, yeah, I went on for a bit. <laughs> no, everything you said was valid. We needed to, yeah. people need to hear that. He always, he always is, though, aren't you? Well, this is the thing with us three. Like we all speak our mind and we all understand each other. Hey, how's your sassim? How you doing? Uh, yes, my guy. Oh, How are you doing? That's my bro there. Oh, big up to you, yeah. Morning, morning. Yeah, morning. Where are you? Good morning. <laughs> are you in, where are you? America. California. Oh, and... wow. Yeah, so, yeah, we're just, we've got such a problem here. I mean, I know over there it's it's crazy as well, isn't it? With the I think it depends where you are. But, yeah. mm-hmm. I'll let my guy talk, man. <laughs> Tell him, bro. I think he's the reason. What's it saying in Kelly? <laughs> Everybody's hey, nice different. You. you can't judge a book by its cover. Same here. There you go. Yeah, definitely. There you go. Yeah. Because I never do. That's what exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I never do. Because you can never, you can never tell. You know what I mean? Well, History. people, people like to judge based off of what they've experienced in their life. And if they didn't see it or hear about it, they make preconceived notions. Mm. Yeah. And That's right. And that happens a lot, doesn't it? I think the problem is, yeah, is that everybody's looking outwards for answers rather than looking inwards. Yeah. Yeah. Make you right. That's what the when problem you, is. People are not connecting. Change begins with some. Mm, they're not connecting when you spiritually. Point finger, when you point the finger at other people, you have three pointing at yourself. One, two, three. Oh, oh yeah, that's oh, a good oh, saying, oh, man. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> I like that saying. That's fucking loud. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's so true. Yeah, my God. That is 30. Mm-hmm. I like that one. Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to read out a few... Bit some more wisdom, bro. But that's what's missing from the world is wisdom. Exactly. More truth. Less stories. Exactly. Knowledge is power. Energy Mm -hmm. does not lie. Yeah. It certainly doesn't. It just changes. Exactly. Yeah. Well, changes form. You can turn negatives into positives. I keep telling people this. Yeah, of course. Even the worst bullshit that you've been through in your life, it legit does not matter how much bullshit you've been through, you can twist it into something positive. It's always possible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's a fact. And I'm speaking that as somebody who has been born into violence and fucking incarceration, torture and shit. Mm-hmm. I was tortured as a baby, you know, and I can still say that you can turn <laughs> any shit situation into a positive. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Like, I probably wouldn't be as strong as I am spiritually and emotionally and physically if I didn't go through the shit I went through as a kid. 
Yeah. You know, it, it makes us if you didn't learn from things, it, it, if you didn't learn, you make the mistake again and again. It took me a long time, bro. I got kicked out of a lot of schools when I was a kid because I used to beat the fucking shit out of bullies. <laughs> when I saw bullies bullying <laughs> people, that was it. I just, mm. something clicked in my head. I thought, that's my dad. Bang. Yep. Fucking have that. Yep. Yeah, I saw them exactly equal to my, my biological father, and I used to just fucking snap and just kick the shit out of them. I didn't care how old they were, how big they were. I got kicked out of around 17 schools in total. I sat down one day and tried to remember all the names and places. Cool. That's a lot of schools. It took me 17 schools, bro, to learn. <laughs> <laughs> The amount of times I heard you cannot take the law into your own hands in the yeah. in the head teacher's room was Why not? insane. Uh, Why not? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I remember once. Yeah, can, can I give you a quick little um, a quick little story? Yeah. From when I was in school, I remember one time <laughs> that we had this art teacher called Mr. Shankland, and somebody threw a sharp pencil at the back of his head when he was writing something on the board, he was the art teacher, you know? And he was a short, stocky, fiery guy. And he turned around, and for some reason, nobody else in the classroom was laughing, only me. I found it funny. And um, it was more the look on his face when he turned around. His face was like a beetroot. And he was like, who did that? And then he looked at me because I was laughing, and everybody looked at me. But it weren't me. No. So he frog marched me out of the room like this, put me out there. I was at the door going mm, like that. Everybody was laughing. Yeah. That pissed him off. He came out of the door. He was prodding me in the shoulder, spitting right up in my face and shit, shouting at me. I told him, stop. I fucking banged his hand off because it was hurting. Yeah. yeah. And then he put his fist up. When he put his fist up, I nutted him straight in his face and knocked him out. <laughs> the whole class watch and they were clapping and walking. <laughs> yeah, imagine this, yeah. Our headmaster, he was one of them guys that used to wear the square hat with a tassel on it yeah. and the cloak and shit. Yeah. And he came from the day where they used to cane the students and shit in front of the whole school in assembly. And um, he sort of still had all these strict rules and shit. So he had to have an appointment to go into his office. But I just walked in there. And I said, um, he flipped out, in it. I said, I don't give a shit if I'm meant to have an appointment. He tried, he tried to pick the phone up because um, I told him, I knocked out Mr. Shankland, in He tried to say, I'm calling the police. I'm st I, stick I was a bad guy, I'm telling you, to some extent, in it. <laughs> but I was just defending myself, though. <laughs> I stick his hand down on the phone. I tell him, old man, you ain't fucking calling anybody. You're going to listen to me. So I sit down. I put my feet on his desk. He's like, get your fucking feet off my desk. He swore in. He never swears to that guy, but he said, get your fucking feet off my desk. I'm like, listen, old man, your teacher tried to fucking stick one on me. Yeah? He was already prodding me in the shoulder. If you don't want your school shamed in the newspaper, I'd keep quiet if I were you. I wouldn't be calling the police because it ain't going to look good when they find out that the whole class will testify that he was prodding me in the shoulder mm -hmm. and he threatened to punch me, yeah. you know? They ain't going to look good. I would suggest they're going to arrest him as well, even if they do arrest me. Yeah. They're going to take him as well. I said, I would, I would think about this. So he said, okay, listen, two weeks you're suspended. I said, thanks for the holiday, you old prick, and I walked out. <laughs> oh, <God. Yeah. laughs> I was a bit mad in school, but that was a result of me, like, I was standing up for myself, do you know what I mean? And I heard from one of the other students, he'd already knocked, uh, he'd already been knocked out before for the same kind of thing as well. So it didn't look good for, for oh, him anyway. It looked a bit bad for him. Oh, but saying that you. <laughs> he gets ago, a bad reception. So. Teachers were able to hit kids, weren't they? Yeah, I think that art teacher come from that generation and he just sort of slipped back into it momentarily. Yeah, because I've had a And I, I weren't that kid to be doing up. that to because I fucking headbutted him straight in his face. Mm. He was snoring on the floor. <laughs> oh, he was convulsing as well at first. He was going... <laughs> I was like, oh shit, what have I done to him? <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> oh. Yeah. 
just want to but I don't think, to be honest, yeah, I'm not going to encourage any other kids to do that behaviour because you get grilled like shit, especially these days for that kind of shit. Yeah. But I mean, to be honest, I don't think that that was an inherently you know I mean evil now, thing. So. Because, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't fancy I wouldn't being a teacher now <laughs> at all. No, it's not. I wouldn't easy. fancy being a kid back in school now. We got. To be honest, so what it's like although they've got a lot more, mm. it's just mad. Definitely. I couldn't deal with school now. I think I'd end up in young offenders <laughs> yeah. or something. we've <laughs> done it anyway. We've been, been to school <laughs> and done it. Uh, big up to DJ Steve. Uh, Carlos, um, artistic cat, is saying, nice saying, 100-100. Oh, that's my that's my daughter. Ah, oh, that's my oh, oldest love daughter. Love to you, <laughs> artistic. Uh, so yeah, massive shout out to City Dread as well and Lord Blue. Big up to Hash Assassins as well. Thank you for joining us before. They look beautiful over there in Kelly. <laughs> mm. uh, as someone had commented as well about um, the prisons over there, the serious man in Kelly. They're scary. Mm. Lord. Did you see my posts about prison here? I saw. I did see some of them. I remember the, the was there was the one about the gay, that one. Yeah, I'm 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 just being real in it because I hear from a lot of my bros that have been to prison. Oh, that shit don't go on in the UK. I'm like, shut the hell up, bro. Shut the hell up for real. You're basically telling me there's no like predatorial gaze in prison or none of that shit. You're lying. This is the right thing, isn't it? Mm. I get a bit suspicious of people who deny that it happens here, to be honest. <laughs> I wonder if they got popped and they just don't like talking about it. Mm. Possibly. But it is a no-no. It's a no-no to talk about, isn't it? There's no way it don't go on. Of course you it know does. What I mean? Of course it does. Yeah, I know. It's absurd them. to suggest that. No. <laughs> yeah, that don't make sense, mate. You're lying. Because mm -hmm. that's a whole and different type of agenda than you already, like anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Imagine in the lifers' prison as well. Yeah. There's loads of lifers that get put in with uh, ordinary prisoners as well. Oh. oh, we've got a lovely message from DJ Steve. Enough love to oh, you guys. Love. Coming from DJ Steve in New Jersey. Massive big up to you. Enough love. Yeah. Love to hear from you. Um, yeah, so big up to everyone today. When are we thinking of doing a live again then? Because well, we're definitely doing um, one next Sunday. Yeah, I, I definitely want to do some during the week. I know you're not going to be able to probably join us. I mean, I've got ready Thursday, but we mm. could maybe do something before that. We could maybe try four till five, and then I'll go on and do rep your ends. Um, I'm going to be back on a job from tomorrow till next Tuesday. But I might oh, be We'll work it out. Sunday. We'll work it out. Mm. We'll do... We definitely want to try and do at least two during the week, I think. It's so necessary. The more we all talk, the more we put all this out. Do you know what I mean? We're gradually... And just come together. Mm -hmm. Did you see my posts about um, age restriction on social media? Yeah, that's another thing yeah. we need. Yes. I thought that was a good suggestion, to be honest, to restrict it to people so that they have to use their driver's license or passport or bank card to have an account yep. in the first place mm -hmm. and not to allow comments for anybody except those who are subscribed. Yeah. I mean, it's, it still allows people to go on and see your page and put likes and share the post. You probably get more saves and shares it if that was the case anyway, mm. to be honest. Yeah. Because <laughs> they can't comment, they're probably more likely to save your post or share it with someone who can comment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I like that. Big P saying, so that... big up you guys, was interesting live, I'll hop on next time if I'm free, etc. But God bless you all. 
Oh, thank God you. you See you next time. Love, love, yeah. I think we're gonna we'll finish up the live anyway because we were literally just gonna do an hour, weren't we, today, Christella? Yeah, but, but we needed to say everything we needed to say. There's never enough time to talk about it, is there? No. This is the other thing. No. We literally you know? can leave it on twenty four seven.